Right. Hey man, I would not be annoyed by y'all females, man. You a gold digger. All you want is some money. You don't want no relationship. If I was John Cena, I bet you you're me. If I was Dwayne the Rock and Justin, you're me. I'm out here doing the work of Jesus Christ, trying to defend these goddamn men out here for these sorry ass females out here. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. It is so good to have you all here with me this evening. Good to see you all. Today is Sunday, February 27th, 2022, and you are now watching Permission to Exist. I am your host, PTE, and we are continuing on in what was not originally intended to be a series, but the reception to the first show was so good. And so many of you requested a follow-up show that I decided to go ahead and yes, let's go ahead and make this a series. There's many, many different reasons why, and we're gonna get into some of those reasons tonight. We covered a good majority of those reasons on the last show, which was the Sick and Dangerous Men Masterclass. So you can find that linked in the description box and check out that episode to catch up on what we already talked about. That show was more so high level to talk about this issue and really hit on some major points about this issue. And what I decided to do going forward was really drill down on specific aspects of this whole entire problem, because it is a problem. And it's a problem that's starting to get attention in higher places. And I do believe we will see the end of this on the social media airwaves anyway. I do think it will come to an end. I think they will be pushed to the outskirts of the internet where they actually belong, to be honest with you. So welcome. Welcome to everybody in the chat. Good to see you all. Good to have you all. That clip that we opened up with, with the gentleman in the red shirt yelling at a woman that she's a gold digger and all she wants is money and she doesn't want a relationship. And that if he were Dwayne The Rock Johnson, she would F him. And that he is out there doing the Lord's work, warning men about these sorry ass females out here. That clip is from the Steven Crowder show. And no, I do not watch Steven Crowder. I've never watched a single episode. The reason I became aware of that one was he was running an ad campaign on YouTube. And that is the clip that he used. So when I saw that, I said, oh, wow. So I went, found the video and it's still up. The title escapes me, but 
it's from how many months ago? I don't remember. I'm sorry, y'all. But you, it's easy to find. It's from a few months ago. It's easy to find. He went out and did some change my mind thing in Austin, Texas. So that should help you find it. But that's where I got that from. And it's actually not what that video is even about. He's out there arguing with political leftists and all that. He ran into this guy who was bothering a member of his group, uh, a woman in his group. So they confronted him and that's what happened. The clip itself is actually a little bit longer, but I was trying to skirt around the edges of fair use, fair use to show you the end result of the confusion. That is what happens to the minds of a lot of these men when they get off of the manosphere merry-go-round, or as we're going to talk about a little bit later, the manosphere hamster wheel. When they finally get off of it, they're left completely insane. And it's a natural outcome and a logical conclusion to what they feed their minds with all day, every day, and to everything that they actually believe about life, about women, relationships, how the world works. Going insane is the logical end conclusion. It really, really is. So I wanted you all to see that. We'll probably take a look at it again towards the end of the show. But welcome, everyone. Welcome. So we are here once again to talk about sick and dangerous men. The reason is because Within the last couple of years, violence against women has risen, against Black women in particular has risen, but what has also risen is a subculture, primarily composed of men who, whose primary enemy is the woman. They've identified the enemy and the enemy is the woman as far as they're concerned. And what started out as a group of men complaining about children and family court and marriage and things of that nature, what started out as that eventually became a really, really toxic environment with people who truly actively encourage each other toward total destruction. But if they don't encourage oops, if they don't encourage each other towards total destruction, they destroy their enemy. So that's why so much violence against women has taken place because social media companies like YouTube foster this atmosphere. They monetize it, they support it, they promote it, they encourage it. These channels get crazy crazy views crazy, crazy subscriber counts, super chats for days, and YouTube is totally fine with it. But say one thing that they don't like about anything that they've approved, and you get your hands swatted for a week and a strike on your channel. So it's amazing what YouTube allows to live on their airways and what they don't. I think that's very, very interesting. And I think a comparison in front of a jury would be very, very interesting as well. So let's talk a little bit more about why we're here. And I think it's actually better for me to show you why we are here versus telling you. So let's take a look at what has taken place since we last met.
So as you can see, since we last met, there have been multiple crimes against both women and children. And those aren't the only ones. Those are just the ones that I had grabbed and put in my notes so I could reach them easily in the future. But there have been others since, including a woman, an Uber driver, a mother of four, who was killed by a man just so he could rob her. And apparently she begged for her life. Now that's not typical. That's not the typical situation I present in terms of what I talk about in this series, which is this relational aspect. So this man wasn't dating her. He was still dangerous nonetheless. He was just an Uber customer at the time, but still. So this series will continue as long as the nonsense and the madness continues, as long as harm and violence against women is normalized, supported and promoted through social media. This series will continue and I'll continue to expose you and all the little inner workings that you often don't hear on YouTube or on social media. They don't get into the knit and grit like I plan on getting into. So that's why we're here and I'll continue to keep track. And every time we meet, we will go over some of the cases that have occurred since we last spoke. And this series, we last did it on January 9th. So since January 9th, all those stories happened, all those cases took place. Okay. So let's continue. Tonight's theme and the theme of tonight's show is confusion. Part of the reason that these men are sick and dangerous and what makes them sick and dangerous is that many of them are very, 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 very confused. And the reason they're confused is that so many of them hold conflicting beliefs in their mind. They are the masters of cognitive dissonance. And being the masters of cognitive dissonance regarding so many different things takes its toll over time. It really starts to wear on you because I personally believe the mind always seeks clarity. And I really truly believe the mind is always seeking balance and always trying to figure out a problem. And I believe that the mind will work on a problem until it figures it out. So if you're someone who walks around with consistent problems in your mind, it's no wonder you're confused. And it's no wonder that that confusion ultimately leads to anger and violent outbreaks. Because where else are you going to go? Where, where else are you going to put all these thoughts and all this energy? So we are going to talk through, and I'm actually going to give you multiple examples of what they are actually confused about. But before I do that, I wanted to show you an example of one of the confused ones, okay? Now, the gentleman I'm getting ready to show you is actually one of many confused children in this particular space. And he is unique because he actually thinks he's not one of these guys. He thinks he's different. He thinks he's unique, and he also thinks he's Christian. This is going to be the one on the right in the black shirt. His name is Hafiz, and he's from The Roommates. Some of you may have heard of that podcast before. The gentleman on the left is named Ruslan, and Ruslan is actually trying to counter this movement with actual Christianity and actual principles from the Bible. So what he does is he invites guys like the guy on the right up on his show to talk through some of what they believe and compare it to biblical principles. Now, what makes this particular episode unique is that they're both supposed to be Christians. So the guy on the left and the guy on the right are supposed to be Christian. Only the guy on the left has proven it thus far. The guy on the right is heavily associated with the manosphere, but as of late, he's been trying to distance himself, probably because he sees the writing on the wall. He knows this whole entire thing is getting ready to get flushed. They're going to dump it. It's too risky. It's too risky. It's bad on the books. It's a bad look. 
it, it's just, it's not what they want. Y'all already know that YouTube wants bubble gum, cotton candy, and sunshine. You know that. You know they want arts and crafts channels. You know that. They want family friendly. And the manosphere is not family friendly. It's actually anti-family. So they're getting ready to flush the whole project. So I think that's why he's starting to distance himself from it. Nonetheless, the reason I want to show you this clip is because I want to give you an example of the actual confusion, okay? So I want to display the question that Ruslan, the guy on the left, is getting ready to ask the guy on the right. And I'm going to let it play until he finally answers the question. I will pause it every now and then just for the sake of fair use and trying to keep the algorithm happy and all that stuff. But fair use, this is for education, critique, and commentary purposes. The question on the table, what is the red pill manosphere and why are you not red pill manosphere? So let's take a listen. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Let's just jump right in. What is the manosphere and, and, or, and or the red pill community and, and then, yeah, why are the roommates not a part of it? Because I've, I've been told you guys kind of are a part of it. So yeah. I'm confused. So, so let's, yeah, let's just jump right in. No problem. So first and foremost, now I appreciate this opportunity, man. I think it's, uh, we're going to get into a lot of different layers. And it's funny because I've known about you for a long time. Like oh. back in the Wado Brex era. So I, I've been Whoa. following this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I used, Okay, that's love, yeah, so man. I, I used I used to write for Wado um, back in like years ago, like probably like almost 10 years wow. ago. And wow. so, uh, so so definitely, you know, there's a lot of congruency that we'll be talking about when we really get into the layers of this. Yeah. So um, a couple of, a couple of um, months ago, I did a conversation about this, uh, about this. Uh, the title of the video was called Red Pill Disagreements and stuff like that. So it was opportunity to kind of share because we had a lot of new people. Okay, so I just want to remind everyone, the question on the table is, what is the red pill manosphere and why are you not part of it? Because he's saying that he's not part of it and everyone has always known him to be part of this group. So let's continue. Recently joined our channel from the past year. This time last year, we're looking at about 70,000 subscribers um, and now we're at over 440,000. So we had a ton of new people that came oh, over the year. Oh, we got to stop and just say... That's a lot of growth really fast. No, and congratulations. All, all praises to God. All praises to God. And this is this is something that had to happen overnight. People view it as overnight thing, but it's definitely not an overnight thing. Um, and so, so you know, so I did a video like... <laughs> what is the red pill manosphere and why are you not red pill manosphere? That was the question. That's what kickstarted all of this. Elaborate and explain to those who are unfamiliar with our content what we believe in, what we stand for, this, that, and third. And then I got into a discussion about, you know, just a red pill and manosphere, things along those lines. A lot of people, you know, are familiar with, especially with the rise of the movement recently. And so I broke it down. I could do three, one of three examples, depending on how you feel. I can, I can use an analogy using Christianity. I can use an analogy using rap, or I can use an analogy using felines. Which, which one do you prefer? So he's getting ready to answer his question, finally, using an analogy. I want to hear, I want to hear rap first, and then I want to hear Christianity second. Okay, so I'll do half rap, half Christianity, because the same analogy is different, just different breakdown. So, okay. like, generally speaking, like, you have rap, right? And rap is this major category. And within rap, you have subcategories, right? So you might have, you know, CHH, CHH, Christian hip hop, right? Then you might have like trap, right? And then you have like this grunge rap, right? Then you have like East Coast, New York rap, right? You have West Coast rap. So you have all these subcategories within. What is the Red Pill Manosphere and why are you not Red Pill Manosphere? There's similarities that make all the members of the group relatively similar, but then there's uniquenesses amongst the group where when you get into, you know, maybe some of the, um, um, you know, East Coast purists who compare rap to what a um, Machine Gun Kelly would do, they wouldn't consider both of that rap. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay. And so yes, similar yes. to, and then like I said, using Christianity is the same thing. You have Christianity, then you have denominational or theological subdivisions, right? You have, mm -hmm. you have Baptists, you have Methodists. So there is... 
a point in time where I said I wanted to do a show called Scammer Styles. And I still might. I've just been saying that for like two years now. But this is one of them. A scammer style is essentially where, well, one of the scammer styles is essentially you don't answer direct questions. You talk all around the question, over the river and through the woods. And you just take people down these long wandering pathways, almost to the point where they forget what their original question actually was, which is why I have it displayed on the screen, because you may have forgotten what the original question was. The original question was, what is the red pill manosphere? What is it? And why are you not part of it? You have um, Episcopalian, you have Lutheran, you know, you have, you have reformed theology. So you have all these subcategories and there's some universal truths that exist amongst all of them, which make them all part of this category. But then there's nuances where sometimes, even though they're kind of in that category, it's very extreme. So like Westboro Baptist Church, views themselves as Christians, but when you look at their theology and their ideology, you may not can Someone noted the gesturing. Look, when that lying starts up, the gesturing goes crazy. He start he's all he's he's frozen on the very first question this man asked him. What is the red pill manosphere and why are you not that? And he's already doing word salad basically, talking in circles, just going on and on and on to, to two very simple questions. That part of your type of Christianity, though there is similarities, and then you have, you know, the universalist churches, the Rob Bells on the far left, where you kind of like, um, is that Christianity? I'm not sure. So it's kind of within that. That's where I, I kind of break down men's improvement, right? Men's improvement uh, is a major okay. category, and then you have these subcategories within men's improvement. One of the subcategories, you could either call it manosphere, red pill, kind of depending on where you are. Some people like, you know, it's like, <laughs> okay, what is the red pill manosphere and why are you not that? So, so far, the answer that we've received is that it's a huge category, just like Christianity, that has subcategories just like Christianity or rap. Um, schematically, we'll define it different things. So then you have this red pill manosphere in that subcategory of men's improvement, right? Because the problem is when people say, well, the manosphere is content for by men creators, I don't think James Charles is part of the manosphere. He's a male creator. I'm not sure you consider him part of the manosphere. So now he's invoked James Charles, the makeup artist. So to me, it's um there's uniquenesses of it. And so for the roommates and what we stand for, I believe that we're part of men's improvement content. It's something I believe, and we'll talk a little bit more about how I got there as we progress. But I believe we're part of men's improvement content. So we're within that major category, like the way a uh, uh, um, a West Coast rapper is a part of rap, and the way uh, uh, maybe a, a Baptist is a. Have any ladies ever had the experience of asking their significant other, where were you last night? And it kind of came out something like this. <laughs> well, where am I? Could be anywhere. The world is huge. Geographically, you got the Himalayan mountains, you got the Sahara Desert over here. And then if you have a boat or a plane or a train, theoretically, I could be in New York at 8 a.m. and I could be in California by 4 p.m. So when you ask me where I am, like, that's such a big question. That's such a broad question where I was. I could be anywhere. And technically, where is anyone really? Like, what is time? Because just like you say, it's 1156. Well, in two seconds, it's going to be 1157. So is it really 1156? Christianity. But I don't consider myself red pill, you know, like, I, mm. like in, in the way that, um, you know, I got going back to the Christianity example. I hope I'm not losing people when I, I'm a theological nerd a little bit. But the same way, I don't I don't really think a lot of Lutherans consider themselves reformed, the reformed. You know what I mean? So it's now he's on reformed Lutherans, you guys. OK. And the original question was, what is the red pill manosphere, and why are you not that? Why are you not that? That's all that he was asked. Mm -hmm. So I don't consider the roommates part of red pill or manosphere, in my personal opinion. 
Wow. Okay. That's that's that, that brilliantly said. That's a really good metaphor. So Bruce Lawn is so nice. He's a very nice person. Okay. So we're not going to watch the rest of that. If you want to see that, you can check that out. The name of the channel is Bruce Lawn KD. And the video is, is the red pill and manosphere toxic man's improvement and faith with the roommates Hafiz. Okay. So you can check that out. If you want to see the rest, the re <laughs> the reason that I wanted y'all to see that was first of all, that question was asked at the one minute mark. He did not give that answer until the six minute, 24 second mark. So it took him approximately five minutes and 24 seconds to answer that question. And he really didn't. He, he didn't actually answer the question at all. So I wanted to show y'all an example of how confused they are, how very, very confused they are. And the reason that he's working so hard to try to over explain this answer is because his whole brand is Christianity. The guy on the right in the black shirt, Hafiz, his whole brand is Christian male improvement, but you literally can't be Christian male improvement and be part of the manosphere. It doesn't work. The two don't go together. They don't walk hand in hand like that. Like they are actually quite counter to each other. So he's trying to force them to fit and he didn't do a good job. It was not brilliantly stated, but it appears that Ruslan is a very nice person. So he's going to, you know, he's not going to rip him apart. However, he did manage to hold him accountable in this live stream. Because at one point he said to him, you know, when I think of accountability, I feel like that's like my only job as a man is to be accountable, to take accountability and take responsibility you know, and he he gets on him, but he gets on him in a very supportive way. He's very nice about it. Um, so you'll see those of you who choose to go watch it. But I wanted you all to see that demonstration of confusion and action. And the whole thing is like that, really. If you guys want me to react to that whole video, let me know and I will. I just don't know. Well, people react to whole videos. You just have to pause it frequently and talk over it. So if y'all want me to do a reaction to the whole entire thing and what he's actually saying, let me know and we'll do that reaction, okay, as part of this series. But anyway, that was confusion and action. Their minds are not sound. Their minds are not operating out of sound principles. And as a result, they come to incorrect conclusions that often lead them to violence and anger, okay? So now let's just talk through a few of the things that they're confused about. And this is not a complete list. This is just everything that I could think of for the show. And I'm sure I'll think of others later, but as you all think of some, please put them in the chat. Let's run down a list of things that they're confused about. Primarily, they cannot figure out why their approach to life is not working, in particular with women. They have a very particular set of behaviors that they believe are correct and they apply them in different situations and they get really, really negative results and they can't figure out why. They can't figure out why their approach is bad. And if you try to tell them it's not going to do anything because for some reason, learning can't really take place with this group. This group rarely learns anything. Mm, chat says they're cursed. Hmm. They can't learn. So when you try to explain to them why their approach is not working, it doesn't register. It goes in one ear and out the other. They're very committed to their approach. Two, they hate feminine traits in women. Things like softness, sensitivity, what they would call emotionality. But then they get upset when those same women display masculine traits. So one of their number one complaints is that women of today are too masculine. They say that we're very, very masculine, right? But then when women are actually women, girls, girly, when we're soft, when we're sensitive about something, emotional, um, I associate cleanliness with women, but I know that there's a lot of dirty women out there, so I don't know if I should, but if we want something clean, like, for example, don't wear your shoes in the house. Don't bring your muddy boots in the house. They'll lash back. Oh, you're such a woman. Oh, you being such a female. You're such a girl. Okay. 
<laughs> well, should I be masculine? Because when I'm masculine, you don't like that either. But do you see how that's confusing? Because basically they don't know what they want out of the opposite sex. They really don't know what they want out of the same sex either, but they definitely don't know what they want out of women. They don't know if they want women to be sweet, soft, subtle, sensitive, because when she is, she's typically mocked and ridiculed for that. It's almost like he's telling her man up. Why are you crying? Man up is basically what he's saying to the woman. Why are you getting emotional? Man up is what he's basically saying. So then when she does man up, he fusses and complains that she's too masculine. <laughs> Here's a big piece of confusion. They don't want to have children. And when they do, they don't want to pay child support, but they are also extremely anti-abortion. It's truly bizarre. You would think that the people on the, on the, yeah, anti-abortion side would be headed up by them. You think they would be leading the anti-abortion movements the way that they talk about it. But it's bizarre because they also don't want kids and don't want to take care of the kids that they have. So it's peculiar that they're also anti-abortion as well. And it's really only because these men, and we'll have to do a separate show on this, are big on punishment of the woman. They want the woman punished. And part of punishment in their mind is leaving you with a child that you can't take care of. That's part of punishment. Yes, they want women trapped. So when you get out of the trap or when you get out of your punishment via abortion, they get very, very mad about that. So it's not because they actually want the children to live. They don't want their kids. And a lot of times they don't take care of them. It's a punishment issue and you, you avoided your punishment and they don't like that. But it's still very confusing. It's a confusing position to be in, to advocate for anti-abortion, but then also advocate for not taking care of your kids. That's a confused mindset. That's a double-minded man. Next, they hold women to very high standards of accountability while also believing that women are weak, inferior, and stupid. So then how can a stupid person make good decisions? So this group, the Manosphere in particular, believes that women are not smart, we're not intelligent, we don't build anything, we don't create anything, we don't do anything. And But then are very, very upset with the way that women behave. And I just don't understand why you're upset. You said that we're immature, stupid, weak, inferior, and dumb. Well, then wouldn't you expect that kind of behavior out of people that that's what you think they are? It's perfectly aligned. And yet they complain though. They want women held to a higher standard of accountability. They want women to act smart, intelligent, strong, capable. They want women to act that way but they also at the same time believe that those same women who they want to behave in an intelligent way are stupid. So how can you expect good behavior out of bad people? <laughs> That's confusing. It's very, very confusing. So it, it would leave you confused is what I'm trying to say. You want this person to act right, but you also think that they're inherently stupid, that they're born dumb. So how can you expect someone who's born dumb to act right. It's confusion. This is why they're so confused, you guys. This is why they're so upset. This is why they can't figure things out, figure life out, because these are the thought loops that they're running in their head. So here's one on that same thread about the whole masculine feminine thing. They say that women these days are masculine, and they also say that there are a lot of single mothers raising sons. Well, if that's the case, if women are masculine and these masculine single women are raising sons, then why do you say that women can't raise boys because we feminize them? One of their biggest complaints is that women, if a woman raises a male child by herself, she's going to feminize him. She's going to soften him up and make him act like a woman. Well, I don't see what you're worried about when you also say that women these days are masculine. 
Well, then it sounds like she's going to be raised by a strong masculine figure, is she not? So what's the problem? If women are masculine these days and they're raising boys, well, she, it sounds like the young man is going to be raised with a strong masculine figure, eh? That's what I would think, you know, but <laughs> unfortunately, they think both things at the same time. They think that a, a masculine woman can feminize a male, can feminize a boy child. Now, how's that? She's masculine. So how can she feminize a male child? Unless what you're saying is by her acting masculine, he takes on the feminine role. Is that what you're trying to say? And if that's the case, well, then where did the actual male go? But I don't think that's what you're saying. That would be a little bit more complex and a little bit too advanced than I've ever seen this group actually go. So I don't think that that's what they're actually saying. I think that they're saying by virtual virtue of the female presence, and the predominantly female presence in this young man's life, he's going to automatically adopt feminine traits and characteristics. That's what they're saying, just by exposure. <laughs> so what that by, by their logic then, whatever you're exposed to the most is what you should become. So girls who grow up with a bunch of brothers should become boys or very, very masculine girls. And vice versa, boys who grow up with a lot of sisters should grow up to be very feminized. And I think we all know that that's not the case. I think you just are who you are. You're going to grow up and turn out to be how you're going to grow up and turn out to be. I've seen very masculine men come out of families full of women. So, and vice versa, I've seen very feminine girls come out of families full of men. So your logic and your theory don't hold, but you know, We'll, we'll entertain them nonetheless. Here's one that keeps them confused. A woman is a gold digger if she has financial expectations for a mate, but she is also blamed and told to choose better when she selects a mate without resources. So basically, <laughs> just like the, the man in the clip that we opened up with, if a woman says, okay, I don't want to scrape the bottom of the barrel. I'm going to try to find a decent guy, whatever her version of decent is. And she finds him. And if he has money, they'll call her a gold digger. But if she aims low and goes with a low life type of guy, they'll look at her and say, well, you should have chosen better. <laughs> but when we choose better, you call us gold diggers. So the reason that this is confusion for them it's because they can't understand why they can't find a woman who's not like that. And they don't realize that they, they've created the perfect catch-22 where there is literally nowhere for her to be in that equation that would be satisfactory. If she's looking for a man, if she's choosing better, she's a gold digger. If she's not choosing better, well, that's her fault. And it's she's stupid and sucks to be her. She should have chosen better. Now, why can't I find a girl? Well, because if she expects expects things out of you, you think she's a gold digger, but then if she doesn't choose you and chooses someone else, you'll say that she chose low, that she aimed low. So they're confused and angry because they can't find a woman that actually fits in there somewhere because she doesn't. There isn't a woman who fits in between those two. And his mind is what I'm saying. Because if she's neither, if she's just working, making her own money, well, then she's too independent and she's never going to find a man because she's too independent. You see? So even when she's not looking for you to have money at all, oh, well, you're too independent and you don't think you need a man for anything. <laughs> I think this would be a fun board game, honestly. I think it would be a really fun board game to basically... The object of the game is to, no matter what someone says to you, you have to have a comeback that gives you like another out. So the way this round would be played is like, okay, here's a woman, you know, she's, she's going to date, you know, Charles who doesn't have any money. And then he'll say, oh, well, she should have chosen better. So then you pick the choose better pile and she marries a billionaire. Oh, well, she's a gold digger. And then you have to pick, like, I don't know how it will work, but I just think it's funny. It's like you're trying to design. 
I think the game should be called Catch-22. And you're trying to design yourself out of the Catch-22. So like then you, okay, so you design a woman. She's working. She has a degree. She wants to get married. But, you know, she's just waiting for the right time. And see if you can get out of that Catch-22. Something like that. I don't know. It sounds like it would be fun. Hey, Daniel, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it so much says, I needed this content and introspection so badly right now. You are very welcome, and I appreciate your ongoing support of the channel. I really do. I'm going to think through that game, and I'm going to get back to you guys, because I think it would be fun and funny to keep trying to wiggle your way backwards out of these catch-22s. They might already have that game, or at least that title, but anyway... Let's see. Okay, here's a big one. They want a pure and chaste woman, but when she is, she's a prude who shouldn't expect any man to stay with her for very long because she's not putting out. And then they wonder why they have trouble in the bedroom, getting women to come to the bedroom with them, things of that nature, or why they can't find this pure woman that they want. Because even if they do occasionally find a woman who is celibate, and they may even run across a virgin every now and then. What they then begin to start doing is trying to get her to sleep with them. So it's like, this is the woman that you wanted. You wanted a woman who's not out there. She's not sleeping around. She's not sleeping with anyone. She's waiting. And now you're impatient. So that's going to create confusion because he's going to be like, well, I don't understand why she doesn't want me. She should. I'm a good guy. You know, she waited, she waited on all those other men, but she doesn't have to wait for me. <laughs> so they're confused why they can't find the sexually pure woman that they desire, who's willing to tolerate their very odd and very weird catch 22s. Thank you, Cheryl, for the super sticker. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for watching and I appreciate your support of the channel. Why won't she sleep with me? Well, because you're pressuring her out of a boundary that you should be happy about. So the chat says, I'm confused. Aren't these just incels? Not all of them. Not all of them. They're not all incels. Some of them are actually actively out there dating and they can secure a date with a woman, but they typically cannot secure a second date with a woman. So I guess technically you could say that they were incels. I consider an incel a person who can't even get a date. Like obviously they're not sleeping with anyone, but I consider it to where they can't even <laughs> get a date. But um, no, they're not all incels, not all of them. Some of them are actively dating and they meet women, but they run women off with this mindset because like I told you before, it sits right on the surface. It's not buried. It's not hidden. It doesn't take long at all. You sit down at the dinner table and typically the first one of the first questions he will ask you is something along the lines of, do you cook? And it'll be phrased just like that. Do you cook? And it's typically left field, is typically not in context, has nothing to do with what you were talking about. You'll sit down and be like, oh, man, this is such a nice restaurant. Good pick. You know, I'm glad we came here. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and order your drink. Order something to drink. OK, you order. Hey, waiter, waiter. Blah, blah, blah. And then as the waiter walks off, you're just kind of settling in those first few seconds. He goes, so tell me, do you cook? And it's like, what? <laughs> what? Like, that's the first question you ask me out of everything everything going on in the world, everything going on in society, life. The first question out of your mouth at a restaurant is, do you cook? And when you do something like that to me, I'm typically going to respond with something like, well, I haven't starved to death yet. Like I just, it, it, it's amazing. So anyway, the point of me telling you that is that it's typically right on the surface. It hasn't gone anywhere. Now, here's a final piece of their confusion, and it actually leads me in to another part of their confusion, but they lament the destruction of the nuclear family, meaning man, woman, and child. But they also tell men not to get married. 
And it's really amazing to listen to when they go off on their little rants, their little word salad tangents. They typically talk about, you know, how feminism destroyed the Western world and destroyed the family. And we got to get the family back together. Got to get the family, the family, the family. Got to put the family back together. And then on an entirely different episode, they're telling their viewers not to get married, that it's the most financially devastating thing a man could ever do to himself and that the woman walks away with everything. So don't get married. Just just date and be a player. They tell a lot of them to go overseas. They tell them to get their passport and take that mess to other countries. But some of them are discovering right now, for example, in Ukraine, they are not select and they are not number one in, in the Ukraine um, with all this stuff that's going on. They've been denied access to certain countries and they've been denied boarding on certain trains. And it is true. Look it up. So while you're running off to other countries trying to escape your issues at home, when it all goes down, you are literally the first to go or the last. It depends on the circumstance. In this particular circumstance, you're going to be the last to get out of Ukraine. They're going to evacuate everyone else first. So anyway, that could be a different show altogether. But let's transition a little bit into more of their confusion. I mentioned this on the first installment of the series that I did. But part of the reason they are so confused is they are living a liberal lifestyle with conservative expectations. And this was huge for me when I finally realized this and figured this out, that they live a liberal lifestyle, but they have conservative expectations in particular of their women. So what that generally means is they do everything opposite of either Christian principles, biblical principles, conservative principles, whatever you want to call them. They do everything opposite. So instead of dating one girl, being committed to her, proposing to her and marrying her, they want to date multiple women, lie to these different women, keep them on a merry-go-round, keep them on a rotation, sleep with all of them, impregnate some of them, but expect to find a wife in all of that. And all of that, they expect to actually find a wife through, through that lifestyle. And it's interesting. They typically don't go to church. And I'm not saying you got to go to church to get married and all that. What I'm saying is for what they say they want out of a woman, these would be people who go to church and they don't. So they don't go to church. A lot of them are actually atheistic or atheists. They don't believe in God at all, you know. They don't have any guiding light is my point. They don't have any guiding principles that would actually make them better people. They're not even Buddhists. They're nothing. They don't, they don't believe in anything higher than them. And yet they want women who typically would be following some sort of conservative principles like saving herself for marriage, you know, dating only one man at a time, marrying pretty quick, you know, if y'all decide you like each other and you're a good fit and there's no real issues, why drag it out? Getting married pretty quick, starting that nuclear family. Those are all pretty conservative principles, but these men are liberal as hell. They lead incredibly liberal lifestyles and yet they have conservative expectations. So they claim that they want to preserve the nuclear family, which some would argue is a conservative expectation, but at the same time, they encourage men not to get married for fear of divorce or for fear of losing all their money in divorce court. They want their women to be young, virginal, and chaste, but they also want a supply of whores or promiscuous women to satisfy themselves with. And if a woman, and we're talking about these, these men, if a woman decides that she wants to be just that chaste, virginal, you know, um, celibate, she's typically threatened with being cheated on or actually cheated on one or the other, 
or she will be placed in a rotation with other women who are putting out. So what that means is on Sundays, he'll go to dinner and maybe brunch with the virginal girl who's not putting out. And then when he leaves her, he'll go see some of the women who are putting out. That is a very liberal lifestyle, but he wants to find a wife through that lifestyle. It makes no sense. Like the two cannot produce what he's looking for. So he finds himself angry and confused, lashing out. What's up with all these women? Why are all these women sluts and whores? Why can't I find my chaste virgin? And the funniest part is he probably had access to a chaste virgin coming right out of high school. Not all of them have high school girlfriends and sweethearts, but a lot of them were dating a young lady in high school when they were 16 and 17 years old. And honestly, they had access to that girl that they wanted, the young, virginal, chaste girl who, once they turned 18, I mean, people used to get married at 18. I'm not endorsing that necessarily in this particular society and economy. But my point is, at one point in time, they had exactly what they wanted. But as a woman gets older, you're going to find fewer and fewer virgins. It's not that they don't exist. It's that you're going to, they're going to be fewer and further between. But of course, this is the same group who believes that after a certain age, a woman is essentially worthless. So if she's like a 30-year-old virgin, that's probably not desirable to him because his confused mind would tell him, well, what's wrong with her? <laughs> so she did everything you wanted her to do. She waited, she was chaste, virginal, and she just so happens to be 30 and now you don't want her because she's 30. Even though she's not quote unquote used goods at 30, she's 30 though. Like these men don't deserve anybody. They really don't. They deserve to be alone. They deserve to be strung out, angry and mad. Just like that guy who we opened the show with. They all deserve that fate. They really do. They do because to have these kinds of expectations for another human being, period. But to be so dysfunctional yourself, like the entitlement of it all, the narcissism of, of it all, like where do you get off? Well, I know where they're getting off these days. Their coaches are coaching them into this mindset. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more here in a second. Their coaches are coaching them into this mindset, making them truly believe that they have the right to have all of these expectations out of other people, but deliver very little in return. And then are confused and don't understand why people stop dealing with them altogether when they keep running that same program. They don't understand reciprocity. They don't understand the concept of a two-way street. The attitude is, I am a king, I am high value, and you need to serve me because you are a lowly woman who should be grateful that I'm even talking to her. That's their mindset, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit more about how, they're, how they got this way and how they're becoming this way. Again, I do believe their downfall is nigh because I believe that it's starting to become more and more clear that these, these, this particular set of content creators is making these men mentally ill, clearly. Like that's part of the reason I had to grab that clip because I've never seen them bug out and spaz out on the street like that. Normally it's like street preaching, but I've never seen them spaz out about women bugged out on the side of the street. So that means that this mindset has probably driven some of them to the street. And what I mean is, first of all, it consumes their everyday waking life. It's all they think about 24 seven. So that's a problem all by itself. That's gonna affect your work, your ability to earn money or do anything really. But the thing it's gonna affect most is your relationships in particular with women. So chances are what is happening is a lot of these men, like the one we saw at the start of the show in the red shirt, had a woman at one point in time 
either a girlfriend or a wife, one or the other, sometimes even just the mother of their children, who got so fed up with his nonsense and with this mindset, she put him out. He probably couldn't get a place very quickly, so he ended up on the street. Or maybe he ran to another woman's house, she put him out. He runs to another woman's house, she put him out until eventually he ends up on the street yelling at strangers walking by that women are gold diggers who just want money. So, you know, that's that's where they end up. They end up completely insane. And what I believe, borderline schizophrenic. So let's talk about this really quick. The end result of most confusion is not peace. It's typically frustration. So think about any time you've ever been confused, trying to find a place that you're looking for while driving and you have a GPS <laughs> and someone may have even given you like verbal directions. But in that moment, sometimes the GPS takes you too far. It stops you short. It takes you on an off ramp. You weren't supposed to go down and it confuses you. And you typically find yourself being very frustrated in that moment. Have you ever gotten lost in a parking garage or on a very large college campus? Could you have sworn you did that one thing only to find out you didn't do it? You could have sworn that you did it and then you discover that you didn't do it. Or has anyone ever told you a story that made no sense at all? The end result of all of these experiences is a sense of frustration. And that is the end result of confusion. The end result of most confusion is not peace. Typically it's frustration. When you are confused about something, you typically don't like it. Your mind wants to solve it. Think about something you've lost or misplaced and never found. There are things that I lost y'all that to this day, I'm still thinking about where they could possibly be. Still, still looking for them years later. I'll probably never find them, but I'm still looking for where they could possibly be. My brain never let it go. Same thing with mysteries, real life mysteries or fictional mysteries. It's like you're stumped and continuously guessing. It's that lack of answers and the lack of details that drive a person insane. And all of those are just small and simple examples that I gave you. But hopefully there are enough to illustrate what I mean by the feeling of confusion. OK, so I bring that up to say that I believe the manosphere does exactly this. And I believe that they do it on purpose. Whether or not they realize it, they are inducing confusion. And I personally believe schizophrenia in most of their members. I do believe that they're doing it on purpose, actually, to be honest with you. Thank you for the super chat, Brandon. I appreciate your support. Got three thumbs up. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and your ongoing support of the channel. So when I consider this, and this is really taking me down more of a, an A deeper PTE road, but I am currently suspended on a deeper PTE, but I will be back next week, either on Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> I think Tuesday, but maybe Wednesday, who knows? But this is more, more for that channel, but the confusion that they induce, the brainwashing and the schizophrenia, I believe that they are inducing in these men is on the level of like CIA operative level. Like I think there are some well-known and documented cases of CIA brainwashing and other mind control techniques that they've done to people over the years. And I don't know a lot about it, y'all. I just know that it has happened. <laughs> I just don't know all the details, but I would put them on the level of CIA operatives. The question is for what though and, and why? What is the purpose of what they're trying to accomplish? Why are you trying to do this to these men? Why have you done this to these men? You're not trying to do anything. You've done it. But why though? Like what is the purpose? What is the end result of turning hundreds of thousands, if not millions of men against women? What is the purpose of that? 
what what could possibly be the reason? So I think I'll explore that more on a deeper PTE once I'm off time out. But let's talk a little bit more about this schizophrenic aspect of things. So what is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a chronic psychiatric disorder that affects how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. Behaviors include social isolation, disorganized behavior, aggression, agitation, compulsive behavior, excitability, hostility, repetitive movements or lack of restraint, and cognitive or thought behaviors include delusion, amnesia, belief that an ordinary event has special and personal meaning, belief that thoughts aren't one's own, disorientation, mental confusion, slowness in activity, or a false belief of superiority. Okay, sound familiar? And here are a few more symptoms that are characterized by episodes of psychosis and schizophrenia. A worrying drop in grades or job performance, new difficulty thinking clearly or concentrating, suspiciousness of or uneasiness with others, withdrawing socially, spending a lot more time alone than usual, unusual, overly intense new ideas, strange feelings, or having no feelings at all, decline in self-care or personal hygiene, difficulty telling reality from fantasy, confused speech or trouble communicating. So this is, or these are the symptoms of schizophrenia. The ones that stand out to me the most regarding this particular group would be the aggression, the agitation, the hostility, the lack of restraint, delusion, beliefs that ordinary events have special or personal meaning, disorientation, mental confusion, and a false belief of superiority. Also, suspiciousness of or uneasiness with others, overly intense new ideas, difficulty telling reality from fantasy, and confused speech or trouble communicating. That's to me what stands out to me the most. And here's how they do it. I wanna show you how they actually do it. So this is what I call the Manosphere Fruit Loop. And if you take a look at your screen, what you will see are some of the major themes that keep this group on this particular Fruit Loop. And it typically starts off with number one, these women. And from these women, it deteriorates into a conversation about sluts and whores. From there, the conversation typically moves on to single mothers, which deteriorates into a conversation about welfare, which naturally leads itself to feminism, Oprah, and independent women that somehow works its way around to abortion that ultimately works itself back around to these women. And around and around and around we go. And this is just one Manosphere Fruit Loop. There's several, but this is pretty much the way that it goes. And it can kickstart off with these women. And that's pretty much it. And that's what hops them on. That's how they enter the loop. And they will stay on this loop for eight hours sometimes. So essentially what I feel like these men are doing to their viewers is this right here. They are trying to keep them on a hamster wheel of things that are largely unattainable by them. They may attain some of these things, but certainly not all of them. And as long as they can keep them on this hamster wheel and keep them running after these things and keep them donating to this cause, to this small army that they've got going, as long as they can keep this happening, they feel like they have success. When in reality, this particular group has actually never achieved anything 
all of their major issues, everything that they complain about on a day-to-day -day basis, they make no impact in those areas. They haven't stopped these women. They haven't stopped single mothers, welfare, or anything else. Oh, I forgot to put hair on there. How could I not put hair on there? Hair triggers them deeply. So I'll, I'll rework my Fruit Loop and put, make sure to include hair on there because the conversation about hair has to happen. But this is what they do to these men. And this is what they do to them all day, every day. And I'm not saying they're victims. They go willingly. They show up willingly. If there is any victimhood to be found in this, it's the fact that these social media companies allow this to happen. If there were a movie that encouraged people to go out and harm other people and then they went and did it, how long do you think that movie would be allowed to air in movie theaters and stuff? I think they would probably pull it down pretty quick. They would consider it to be hazardous to the safety of society. Now, in the context of free speech and things of that nature, I don't want to go around saying, oh, this person should be snatched down. That person should be snatched down because of what they believe. It's not about what you believe. It's about the fact that you are literally making people unwell. You are making them mentally ill. You are making them so unstable that they lash out at women in particular and are killing them. In the case of black women, every five and a half hours, killing them. Rage, anger, they don't coach these men off the ledge. They talk these men up the ledge. They tell these men to jump, essentially. They get them all worked up and all fired up and upset and angry and pissed off at these women that they don't know what to do with all this energy. They don't know where to put it. So they end up putting it somewhere and it's usually not in a very good place. So that's why I say their content needs to be heavily moderated, just like they're heavily moderating everything else. They need to have a disclaimer under it that says something to the effect of this content has been found to lead to unhealthy mental outcomes. Please seek a counselor for after consuming this content. You know what I mean? Something to lead them to a better place or something to balance it out. But they just allow it. And then they wonder why violence against women has gone through the roof. But this is all that they do. Pay attention. Next time you see or hear of some of their content out there, you'll see the loop. You'll hear the loop and you'll see it. There's no way off of it. There's no solution out of it. They don't have solutions themselves. Their only solutions so far have been to leave the country and go to other countries because the women of other countries are submissive and feminine and know how to treat a man right. So, so far that has been their only solution. However, data is starting to come out that shows that no matter where this particular group of men goes, they do the same thing in that community. So they leave the women single mothers, they beat them, hit on them, lots of domestic stuff going on, and generally trash the community that they show up in. Because the issue is a mindset. It's the mindset that drives them, that causes them to destroy pretty much everything that they touch. They don't value good things. Good things are like going against the cult to them. All of the things that you see on this Fruit Loop, they contribute to in many different ways. The only thing they really don't contribute to would be number five, the feminism, Oprah, and independent women. Some of you all were saying, why Oprah? They blame Oprah for the fall of women. They say Oprah is the reason that, that women don't like men today. And I'm serious. They blame the color purple and everything else. So Oprah's in there. Oprah's name typically gets tossed in there for, for the movie, The Color Purple, okay? Yeah, they're agents of ruin. Ooh, ooh, that's deep. I might have to do a whole show on that. Just the generalized destruction that follows them everywhere they go because it's the mindset, do you understand? So the mindset you take with you wherever you go, if you're here in the States, if you go overseas to another country, your mindset goes with you. 
And especially if you think you're some sort of God king worthy of worship, well, you're going to take that God king worthy of worship with you to another country as well and pretty much trash it there also. So you guys, this is going to conclude the presentation, this installment of Sick and Dangerous Men, Confusion. I will be back with other installments for the show. I just like to gather things for the show, put them together, get my thoughts together in a logical way so I can present them in a logical way to you. But I'm glad that you all are here. I'm glad you're enjoying this series. I typically don't give disclaimers in the series because they don't give us any disclaimers. So, but it's hard not to. Obviously, no, you know what? No disclaimers. Mm -mm. We're not doing disclaimers for the series. They don't give us any disclaimers. You know who you are and you know who you aren't. There's your disclaimer. You know who you are and you know who you aren't. So with that, you guys, I hope that you will watch this with a young woman in your life. Talk to her about it get her thoughts, and really discuss this with her. We don't want her to be afraid of all men. We just want her to have healthy suspicion because that healthy suspicion could save her life. And a lot of these men are easily identifiable by virtue of their conversation, what they think about, what they talk about, what they focus on, and by virtue of their generalized confusion and if you can see that confusion and spot it, you have a better chance of avoiding men like this. Okay? So until next time, you guys, we will speak again on this issue. Take care. And you'll probably see me again on my other channel when I come off punishment. And until then, take care. Be safe out here. Okay? Bye. And I will not be a lawyer by y'all feelings, man. You a gold digger. All you want is some money. You don't want no relationship. You know, if I was John Cena, I bet you you're a me. If I was Dwayne The Rock Justice, you're a me. I'm out here doing the work of Jesus Christ trying to defend these goddamn men out here for these sorry ass females out here.